Distillation and reflux are two techniques which use vaporization and condensation to either separate liquids or carry out a reaction at elevated temperatures, respectively. Distillation will be demonstrated in the first part of the video, and reflux will be demonstrated in the second part of the video. Distillation is the process of heating a liquid to its boiling point in order to vaporize it, and then condensing the vapor by cooling it in another portion of the apparatus to collect pure liquids. It is a technique used to separate a liquid from non-volatile contaminants or a mixture of liquids with varying volatilities. Because the liquids are miscible, they cannot be separated by extraction. There are different classes of distillations utilized depending on the nature of the liquids to be separated. Distillation setups between the different classes are largely similar, contrasting only in minor modifications. This video will demonstrate the setup for a simple distillation. Simple distillations are used to separate liquids with boiling points below 150 degrees Celsius and differ by at least 25 degrees Celsius. The round bottom flask containing the solution to be distilled is called the distillation flask. Prepare a clamp on a retort stand which will be used to hold the distillation flask. The flask can be heated by a water bath, a mineral oil bath, or a heating mantle depending on the required distillation temperature. In this demonstration, a heating mantle will be used. Attach a ring clamp on the retort stand which will be used to support the heating mantle. Set up a stir plate if you will be using a stir bar. Place it directly under the heating mantle. Connect the heating mantle to a variac using an adapter cord and plug in the variac to an electrical outlet. The distillation flask should be securely clamped inside the heating mantle. If the flask is a bit too small for the heating mantle, sand can be used to fill in the gaps. The distillation flask should not be more than two thirds full. Overfilling the flask may result in bumping whereby the liquid boils in an uneven fashion and may contaminate the distillate. Don't forget to include a boiling chip or a stir bar to the flask. This must be done prior to heating the solution and will reduce bumping. If using a stir bar, turn on the stirrer. The apparatus that will be used to perform the distillation is called a short path. If using a water condenser, be sure to connect the water tubing to the short path distillation apparatus. If performing a vacuum distillation, be sure to connect the vacuum tubing as well. Use a thermometer adapter to fit a thermometer to the top of the still head apparatus. Position it such that the thermometer tip is located at the opening of the receiving tube just before the condenser. Then, Attach the short path to the distilling flask and secure with a keck clip. Make careful note of the orientation of the keck clip. Forcing the clip to the joint in the wrong orientation will break it. If performing a fractional distillation, be sure to attach a fractional distillation column called a vigoro to the flask, then attach the still head to the column and secure the joints with keck clips. The flask that the pure distillate will be collected in is called the receiving flask. Attach the receiving flask to the end of the short path distillation apparatus by securing it with a keck clip. Clamp the flask to the retort stand. Prepare an ice water bath for the receiving flask to support condensation and to ensure that the distillate will not evaporate. Double check your setup and make sure all joints are secured. If necessary, Get an instructor to check your setup before continuing. A water condenser should be used for volatile liquids, whereas an air condenser can be used for high boiling point liquids. If using a water condenser, turn on the water. In this video, an air condenser is sufficient. Also turn on the vacuum if performing a vacuum distillation. Before heating, make sure it is not a closed system Never heat a completely closed system as this can result in an explosion. This can be achieved by connecting the vacuum outlet to a vacuum line or to an inert gas supply. Alternatively, 
the vacuum outlet can be left open to the atmosphere as shown in this video. Turn the heat source on and steadily turn up the heat until the liquid begins to boil. To assist in the distillation process, the still head can be wrapped in an insulating jacket just before the condenser. Common insulators include cotton or glass wool held in place with aluminum foil. Once droplets appear on the thermometer bulb, the temperature measured will rapidly increase. Once the temperature stabilizes near the boiling point of the lower boiling component, record the temperature. Note that the boiling point is a range of temperatures. Do not record just one number. The temperature should not exceed the desired compound's boiling point as this may result in impurities which will contaminate the distillate. In addition, never heat the flask to dryness or an explosion may occur. Once all of the desired distillate is collected, turn off the heat. If performing a vacuum distillation, turn off the vacuum line. Once the heat is turned off, continue to stir while the apparatus cools. When the apparatus is at room temperature, turn off the water if a water condenser is being used. The setup may be disassembled and the contents of the receiving flask may be used for further analysis. Reflux is the continual boiling of a solution where the solvent vapors are cooled and returned to the reaction vessel. While carrying out a reaction at elevated temperatures, solvent can be lost due to evaporation. Reflux allows for a reaction to occur near the boiling point of a solvent without solvent loss. Molecules vaporized in the heated reaction flask cool in the condenser, liquefy, and then return back to the reaction vessel. Prepare a clamp on a retort stand which will be used to hold the reaction flask. The flask can be heated by a water bath, an oil bath, or a heating mantle. In this demonstration, a heating mantle will be used. Attach a ring clamp on the retort stand which will be used to support the heating mantle. Set up a stir plate if you will be using a stir bar. Place it directly under the heating mantle. Connect the heating mantle to a variac using an adapter cord and plug in the variac to an electrical outlet. The flask should be securely clamped inside the heating mantle. If the flask is a bit too small for the heating mantle, sand can be used to fill in the gaps. The flask should be no more than two-thirds full. Don't forget to include a boiling chip or a stir bar to the flask. This must be done prior to heating the solution and will reduce bumping. If using a stir bar, turn on the stirrer. Connect the water tubing to the reflux condenser and then attach the condenser to the flask. Secure the joint with a keck clip. Make careful note of the orientation of the keck clip. Forcing the clip to the joint in the wrong orientation will break it. A drying tube containing a drying agent may be attached to the top of the condenser to keep moisture away from the solution. Double check your setup and make sure all joints are secured. If necessary, get an instructor to check your setup before continuing. Start the water flow through the condenser with the water input at the bottom and the water output at the top. Turn on the variac to begin heating the reaction flask. Adjust it to a setting where the solvent is gently boiling and the solution is under reflux, but do not apply excess heat. Solvent vapor should rise and liquefy in the bottom half of the condenser. The liquid should then return to the solution in the flask after condensing. Once the reaction is complete, turn the heat off. However, continue to stir the reaction flask to avoid bumping while the flask cools. When the flask is at room temperature, turn off the water. The setup may be disassembled and the contents of the flask may be used for further analysis. Distillation and reflux are techniques which work by vaporization and condensation of a liquid. Distillation is used to separate miscible liquids, whereas reflux is used to carry out a reaction without losing solvent. The setups required to carry out these techniques are shown.